The Orlando Magic are doing something no other team in the NBA is doing. The Orlando Magic have won more games than anyone in the league and have yet to lose. They are only one of two undefeated teams in the entire NBA. They have a record of 4-0. and This 4-0 start is the best start in Orlando franchise history. This is something the Shaq and Penny teams never did. This is something the Dwight Howard teams never did. In today's video, I'm breaking down the secrets to Orlando's recent success and telling you how I think they stack up in a crowded Eastern Conference. How's it going, everybody? My name is Troy, and if you are a fan of the Orlando Magic, you are going to love today's video. I don't think the Orlando Magic get enough press, especially on NBA YouTube and in the mainstream media. So that's what I'm doing today, showing this team a little bit of love because they are officially the best team in the NBA, 4-0. and oh. It would help me out a lot if you guys like this video, and if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe to this channel as well posting fresh NBA videos several times a week. If that's your thing, would love to have you be a part of the channel. So to be honest, I didn't expect a whole lot from the Magic this season. In fact, in my Eastern Conference preview video, I had the Orlando Magic finishing outside of the playoffs for the Eastern Conference. If you'll remember last year, the Orlando Magic barely made it into the Eastern Conference playoffs. They were swept in four games as the eight seed. And if you look at what they did during the offseason, they really didn't do a whole lot to improve their team. So for analysts like me, it made me think this year is going to be more of the same. But they're proving a lot of us wrong. When looking at this Orlando team, the first thing that I notice is the bench. This is a bench that's being led by Terrence Ross, averaging more points than anyone else on the team. 21 points per game. If you dive a little deeper into Terrence Ross's stats, then you'll notice that this is a guy who is now in his ninth season in the NBA. He's 29 years old, and he is averaging a career high. And not just by a little bit, he's averaging a career high by almost six points more than what he's done in the past. For Terrence Ross, this is six man of the year type of production. And he's shooting over 40% from three and almost six attempts per game. He's also shooting over 90% from the free throw line. Basically, anything Terrence Ross is putting up is going in. Then you also need to look at his backcourt made of Cole Anthony. This is a guy who was drafted 15th overall in this past NBA draft. I thought he should have gone much higher. I had him as a top 10 pick, and he is definitely showing that he was drafted a little bit too low this past draft. In under 18 minutes per game, Cole Anthony is averaging 8.5 points, four and a half rebounds and over four assists per game. When you compare that with what other rookies are doing, that puts Cole ranked eighth in scoring. He's ranked fifth in total rebounds and he's ranked second overall in assists. That puts him above true point guards like Killian Hayes and LaMelo Ball. And he's doing all this in under 18 minutes per game, which is ranked 15th overall for rookies in minutes played. These stats by Cole Anthony are really something else. Per 36 minutes, he's averaging over 17 points, over 9 rebounds, and almost 9 assists per game. Of course, numbers like that don't usually hold up when you build it out over that per 36 minute. I think if you were to play Cole 30 to 35 minutes per game, he would end up averaging something around maybe 14, 15 points per game and about 6 assists and 6 rebounds per game. Still very good numbers, especially for a rookie. Would not surprise me if we see Cole Anthony move into the starting lineup within the next couple of months. Right now, Dwayne Bacon is manning that two-guard spot. I see him as more of a placeholder until Cole gets more comfortable. And next, maybe I'm kind of burying the lead with this video because the play of Markel Fultz has just been outstanding. This is a player who has really emerged in his fourth NBA season, but you gotta think, with all the injuries that he had his first couple of years, I kind of see this as his second NBA season. He's got his confidence back, he's showing why he was such a high pick several years ago, and the contract extension that Orlando just gave him is already starting to look like a steal. Fultz is averaging over 18 points per game, almost six assists per game, almost four rebounds per game. But what's really impressing me is his shooting. 
Not so much talking about from three point range because he still has some work to do on that, but this free throw shooting. It's unbelievable, 93% from the line. His first three seasons in the league, 47%, 57%, and 73%. He has jumped up 20 percentage points from the free throw line since last season. He's also getting to the line almost twice as much as he was last year. Then elsewhere, you've got really nice play from Evan Fournier and Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic especially, shooting 45% from three in five attempts per game. This is your big man doing this. Evan Fournier letting it fly as well, shooting about five per game from three at almost 40%. And then I really like what Coach Steve Clifford is doing with Aaron Gordon in the offense. Aaron Gordon is playing up to his strengths, I think, as maybe a third or fourth option on this team. He's shooting the fewest number of threes since his second year in the NBA. That says to me he's really getting close to the basket and he's shooting a career high from the field at over 50%. When he does score the ball, he's very efficient with it. His rebounding is also pretty good. Also averaging a career high in steals. It begs the question, so when Jonathan Isaac comes back next season, assuming he's fully healthy, he's just signed that new contract extension as well, what do you do with Aaron Gordon? Do you try to move him now? Do you try to move him during the off season? What are some potential trades for Aaron Gordon. One that I really like is trading Aaron Gordon to Boston for Marcus Smart and Romeo Langford. Maybe get a pick thrown in there as well too. Boston is in need of a big man and I like how Marcus Smart could come off the bench for Orlando. Very similar to what Cole Anthony is doing now. That would allow you to move Cole into the starting lineup. Then you'd have Marcus Smart and Terrence Ross coming off the bench. So the big question is, how long is this going to keep up? So of course, Orlando isn't going to go undefeated for this season. I do expect them to regress closer toward the mean, especially with Terrence Ross. There's no way that he can continue to shoot out of his mind like he's doing right now. And we rarely see it where a guy who's in his ninth season, who's 29 years old, is finally having his best season in the league. I might have to revamp my Orlando predictions though. They're showing that they're a pretty solid team. They're getting after it defensively. They're well coached. They've got a lot of guys who know their roles and bring lots of various strengths to the team. Would love to hear what you think about the Orlando Magic this season. If you're an Orlando fan, then I expect you to comment on this video. Tell me what your early season predictions are for the team this year. Do you think they're going to make the playoffs? How do you think they're going to do? What does the future hold for the Orlando Magic? If it's your first time here, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Would love if you like the video as well. Make sure you click the boxes on the screen for more quality NBA content. I'll see you next time. This is Troy with the Half Court Report. Thanks for watching.